Masters. Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have a hero episode and I'm very excited to have with me Ayoka Gay, who is the System and Test Engineering Manager at Snyder Electric. So welcome, Ayoka. Thank you. Thank you for having me. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. It's Friday, so I'm, I'm ready for the weekend. <laughs> got that right. You got that right. Why can't they all be Friday, right? <laughs> So I, well, I tell you what, Oyo, we love these hero conversations. They're, 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 they just warm my heart every time because I get to learn so much about people and, and what and what drives them. And I love to get these started with just hearing about your personal journey. Okay. So let's see. Wow. Where do I begin? Um, I am from North Carolina. I'm from Eastern North Carolina, small town called Havelock. Havelock. Uh, now, so- where is that at? It is on uh, the coast. So uh, for the, the military heads out there, it's Cherry Point. And so that's the uh, okay. Marine Corps Air Station, the largest Marine Corps Air Station in the world. Nice. Um, so that is uh, my hometown. I uh, went to high school there, middle school and high school there, uh, and went to college at Shaw University in, in Raleigh. So uh, from there, I began my career at Lockheed Martin Aeronautics in Fort Worth, Texas. Started as a, a systems engineer, uh, as a CIS major. Coming in, this was um, when Lockheed won uh, uh, their major contract for the F-35, uh, the military jet fighter. Nice. Um, so I was on the, the ground floor of, of that program. Uh, they got that contract in, in 2001. I started with Lockheed in 2002. So oh, I was wow. right there from the beginning. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> so that was a very, very exciting time of my career. Um, so I was with them for five years and then decided that I wanted to get back closer to home. So right. I came back to North Carolina and started working with Sony Ericsson Mobile as okay. a staff engineer uh, in their R&D organization. And I've since worked for BlackBerry uh, and private industry and now with Schneider Electric uh, as a, as you said, the system and test manager. Right. That is awesome. That's awesome. So Lockheed working on the F-35s. Yes. I got. I, so what was the coolest part of that job? Oh, man. That, that jet... Like to this day, I when I see it like an, in movies or an article about it, it just it is it is one of the coolest things I've ever worked on. Just right. the the technology and the innovation and the forward thinking uh, that went into the design of that jet is 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 really just amazing. It is really a remarkable air vehicle. Yeah. Now, and so so were they actually manufactured there in Texas? Not in Texas. So at the time when I was working for uh, for Lockheed. They were it was still in development, like development had just started. Oh, so okay. I was part of the uh, what they call the support system team that uh, that that uh, supported that that program. So the idea at the time was that they were trying to um, decrease the amount of time that planes were on the ground, okay. uh, you know, getting maintenance and whatnot, because airtime is is prime time. Right. 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 So uh, the idea was that, you know, you would be able to uh, do shorten the maintenance on the ground. The plane would be smart enough to know, hey, I need tires. I need fuel. I need this. And folks yeah. would already know on the ground and have everything in place. So when it lands, it's, it's like a pit crew. They're just they're on it. Right. Right. <laughs> and then the plane can get back in the air. <clears throat> So wow. I was part of the organization that was designing that support system around that. So I had a lot of interaction with uh, folks from the Marine Corps, uh, the Navy, you know, and, and that's U.S. And, 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 and across the, the pond as well. So it was just a really, really cool experience to, to be a part of. And like I said, when I when I see it in today, it's, it's like, yeah, I, I was part of that. You were part of that, <laughs> right? You have a connection to that. Yeah. That is so awesome. So awesome. Love that story. Now, I'm curious. You've been in the industry for quite a while now. So back to, yeah. I think you said 2002 is when you started. Yeah. Where, where are you seeing as some of the bit of biggest challenges that industry has just in general? Uh, let me think about that. So industry overall. So, and not just um, the energy industry, what I'm in now, right. um, but just generally speaking, I think the biggest challenge today is really um, finding the the right skill set, because earlier early in my career it was all about the the title, right? You want right. to get the, the the job. It was all about well, this is what what you are called is what you do. It's not so much the case today. Um, what you're called may not be necessarily all that you do. It's probably only a, like maybe a quarter of it, right? <laughs> because it requires. Because everything is so integrated now, too. 
That's right. Uh, it's not just I'm, I'm building this one thing and we're going to build it and put it in a box and put it on the shelf. Now you've got we're adding all this uh, this digital capability and, and, and data capability and connectivity to things. So we're trying to connect stuff. So now you got to make sure, OK, I've, now I've got to all, all of a sudden know about data and interfaces and, mm-hmm. uh, and system integration and all of these other things. Right. So trying to identify uh, those skill sets and making sure that we're putting our employees and even candidates that are coming in in a mm-hmm. position to, to have the skills that we need and, and having that future view to see what we're going to need next right. is, I think, a, a significant challenge just across the board. Oh, I, I completely agree. We hear it all the time, the skill set, the skills gap. I mean, yeah. it's, a, it's a real gap in industry. And and you're right, the, the titles, they, they no longer matter, really. It's, it's what value do you bring? Where, where can you plug in and actually help an organization get better? And that's what we need to be trying to help people grow and develop. So you know, I, I agree with you 100%. And uh, I'm curious now, speaking to someone who wants to come into industry and they, they've heard that there's a, a skills gap and okay, maybe I have yeah. an opportunity to fill that gap. What are you going to tell them? What advice are you going to give them so, so that they can come in and be effective? Sure. The advice that I, I always give, and because I work with a lot of uh, college students in this area of, you know, preparing for their careers and the advice that uh, the journey that I take them through is first to make sure that you know who you are and what it is that you're trying to do. Because often what folks do is that they start out and they're just focused on the, the end goal where I'm going to be this thing. But do you really want that? Is that what really drives you? Is that what really inspires you? Does that align to your passion and, and, your, and your goals? Mm-hmm. Or are you just looking for a job? Mm-hmm. Because a job is, is a job and that's fine. We all got to eat. We all <laughs> have to have you know a roof over your head, right? But right. ultimately, what's going to get you out of bed in the morning? That's what you want to be intentional about. And you want to use that to inform what, what you're pursuing and how you do it. Yeah. Um, but as far as to be prepared for, you know, once you figure that out, because that that is some work. Right. Um, but once you figure that out um, to begin to do some research to see where what you're what what it is that you want to do, who is doing that mm-hmm. and who is doing that, whether it's the company or individual people um, and whether they're in your immediate network or, or not. Mm-hmm. And being willing to to do the legwork to get more information about, OK, so what are they working on now? I, I had a student who was interested in a particular field. And so one of the and I actually teach a, a class on this. So one of their assignments is to research. You say you want to do this thing, research some companies that are doing this thing. And you need to look at their press room, look at their websites, because what's on their front page is what they are proud of. That is what they are putting their bread and butter, butter into. So look at that and see what see what is, um, you know, what the details are there, you know, where they are with it. You know, is that global? Is it local? You know, what what are the roles that are associated with making this thing happen? And if you have any ideas around it that, you know, I could I could improve that or I could make add this cool thing to this Mm -hmm. or I just want to be a part of making this better and moving forward. That will let you know, Okay, this is the lane that I want to go in. Right. And try to find some people who are doing the things that you aspire to do and ask them for 15 minutes of their time to just talk to them about, well, how did you get here? What do you love about being here? What do you wish that you knew when you were in my position? Right. You know, what kind of training should I be going? What kind of book, what books should I be reading? Uh, What kind of classes should I be taking? You know, since I'm still in school, that is the, where I always tell my students to start. Right. Great advice. So yeah, you mentioned you teach a class. I I, got to know more about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got to slip that in. Right. Um, but I worked with the uh, the department, well, the School of Business and Professional Studies at Shaw University, my alma mater here okay. in Raleigh. OK. Um, and really prior to that, let me back up. I have created, uh, along with a couple of my classmates, a, uh, a summit, a women's summit. And we call it woman to woman. That's awesome. Uh, what I realized. <laughs> thanks. Um, I'm a, I'm a proud alum. I'm very involved. Like I'm in the alumni association. I'm in all the things. Uh, and I interact a lot with students and I began to realize that in, in part of the, the Shaw university's mission in part is to develop future global leaders. And I always try to consider what that really means. Right. Uh, and part of it is your, your academic acumen, right? But you need this other part to, to know how to just live your, your life and interact with people. 
And that, along with your education, is what creates this total package. So in the Women's Summit, we focus on uh, just the, the women uh, at the, the institution, undergraduate women, and we talk to them about what it's like to, to be in industry. What is it like to start in your career? What are some of the pitfalls that, that we've encountered as graduates to kind of give them a, a playbook of sorts? Like, this is what you need to look for. These are the things that you need to prepare yourself for. And these are some of the challenges that you may face, you know, coming in. So out of that, I created a, a course um, and we, were, we piloted it in the business school to pair, uh, you know, the, the academic, the hard skills with some of these soft skills of, like I was saying before, getting to know like who you are, what, is, yeah. what it is that you want, how to be intentional, how to define and, and develop uh, meaningful and purposeful relationships and right. how to really carve out a, a career path for yourself that is going to mean something to you and have an impact on the world. <laughs> well, I'll tell you one thing. It sounds like to me, you're, you're creating real intentional moments to be a mentor for so many people and to help them with their path. I mean, so I'm Absolutely. curious, you know, what drives that passion in you? And, and do you have mentors that are helping you along your journey as well? Because I, I, I'm just loving you know, everything you're saying. That, that class just sounds phenomenal. Yeah, it, it is. And it's, it's really resonated with the students uh, and is but by their own feedback, help them tremendously. Right. And right. again, getting them to think beyond just that I'm going to get this degree and this job, but what are you going to do with it once once you once you get it? Right. Exactly. Because <laughs> you're going to be there like that. That's right. That's right. That's going. Uh, and then you have like the rest of your your life to to live. So what are you going to do? Right. Um. But but yeah, I have been very intentional about uh, mentorship and and creating uh, those those connections. And it really, I think, speaks to just my, my training and, and, and my career as a systems engineer, because that's really my, my job is to help people connect the dots, help right. fill in the gaps and take what it is that, like from a customer perspective, take what it is that, that they think they want and make it into, <clears throat> excuse me, make it into what they want and also what they need mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and, and filling in the gaps along the way. Right. So, and I, I apply that same kind of methodology and mindset to working with students because I, I feel like I have a, a, a real, I'm really skilled at perceiving the gaps. And, mm -hmm. and that was a gap that I saw that mm -hmm. they need this, they need this insight. You know, they, they've got these different classes that's preparing them. They know how to, to code. They know how to create, you know, spreadsheets and, and balance sheets and, and schematics and all these other things. But do you know how to communicate? Do you know what collaboration is? Do you know how to, um, you know, conflict resolution? Right. Do you know how to, uh, you know, establish meaningful relationships so you can influence and, and, and create change and initiate change in the organizations that you're going to be a part of? So right. giving them those soft skills is, is really what, what the point is there. But my mentors have been, and I've, I've had a number of them, and I was thinking about this just over the week, I've had a number of different people to to pour in me throughout my career and really from the very beginning. My very first uh, boss, uh, her name is Gilda Jackson, and she is uh, was and is amazing and, and continues to be an influence on my career. And she's had a story career herself. She's the, the first African-American female colonel for the U.S. Marine Corps. Uh, oh, and she wow. was. Yeah. So and, and knowing her, I've known her all my life. And, and did not really like know that <laughs> until much later. It was like, oh my God, like you're, you're amazing. <laughs> it's like, and just the more that I got to work with her and, and grow with her and know her, it's just like peeling back an onion. It's like, oh my gosh, you do this and you did that and you did this. And, and, and she was really great about uh, pushing me and challenging me. And from the big to the small, like to the small of being in a meeting, I used to fidget a lot. When I first started, I like swing in the chair, just right. don't, don't swing in the chair. <laughs> don't do that. Always have a notebook and a pen in a meeting, uh, you know, up to you need to go to grad school. You need to get your master's in, in this. And she, to this day, she still talks to me about law school. She's been trying to get me to go to Harvard for like the past decade. And I'm like, I, I think that ship has sailed, but, <laughs> but I love the enthusiasm. Um, but I've had people like her uh, really throughout my career. I've had a lot of great, been fortunate to have a lot of good managers, a lot of good mentors that have really um, taken a, a personal interest in, yeah. in helping me move forward and, and navigate these spaces. And I want to do the same for the folks who are coming behind me.
Right. Well, it sounds like you really are leaning into that hard and I'm and such a blessing to have someone like you out there in industry that are serving that next generation and trying to help them grow. And it sounds like your mentor, I wouldn't want to mess with it either that Marine, you know, you know, right. you, you don't mess with Marines. <laughs> so uh, thank you so much for sharing there. I, I'm curious because you seem like you're such a passionate person. Yeah. When, when are you getting that sense of joy? What what brings you that joy in your life? And from a career standpoint, like what, what work are you actually doing where you just feel fulfillment? I uh, at the at the moment uh, leading the system and test team at Schneider, I get my the most of my fulfillment from working with my uh, employees from my direct reports and helping them with their own career development. Okay. Um, we we go through these and and every company does it. You know, has a performance review cycle. You gotta you know, you right. did amazing, and these are the things you need to work on, and all that. But part of that is is the career discussion. Like, you know, what what are you passionate about? Where do you see yourself in the next two, three, five years? Um, what is it that you want to learn that you don't know now? What experience do you want to have that you haven't had yet in your career? And I love having those discussions, and I love even more being able to say, "Hey, you say you're interested in this. You should talk to this person." Or, hey, there's this development opportunity that you should check out. There's this training that you should consider. And even empowering them to bring stuff to me. Like, you know, go out and look. If you see that there's a, a conference or a training or a book or whatever, you know, bring it to me. Let's talk about it. Let's let's figure out how to, to get you in that seat so you can get that knowledge. I love connecting those dots, helping them connect those dots for themselves. I love it. I absolutely love it. Now, last question I, I'm, I'm for, from a career standpoint, but I'm very curious. Sure. And may, we may be going back to Lockheed here. Any highlights that you want to share? I'm going to have to go back to Lockheed and Schneider. <laughs> and if Schneider folks are listening, I love you. I do. <laughs> and we make some really cool stuff. But I'm sorry, a, a jet plane, that's that's hard to compete yeah, with. That's hard um, to beat that. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that's hard to beat. Um, but I... Two, two really high points for me. One uh, was I was present at the first flight of, Ooh, of the F-35. Nice. In and that was amazing to see. I and uh, Because I know how much work <laughs> went into just getting that thing off the ground. And it was, I, ca- I can't describe the feeling just seeing it taxi and, and take off. It was just, you really can't beat it. Right. And and I'm a, a huge Bruce Willis uh, fan, so I've I've watched all the Die Hards at least twenty times, and seeing the F thirty five pop up in a Die Hard movie, I was just like, <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> it is my second favorite Die Hard <laughs> because of that. The first Die Hard is always going to be the best. There are no no debates there. Right, right. Um, but to see to see that in action, whether it's in film or really in theater. Uh, you know, seeing it on the news or like I said, articles and things like that is and and just knowing that I really I really had a significant part of it is yeah. is just really been a, a highlight of my career. That's amazing. That's amazing. I, th- to be there for the first flight. What a story. Well, that, that, yeah. Yeah. It's going to be hard to top that one. I mean, <laughs> that's pretty great. Yeah. All right. Now let's, let's take a, a turn off the career for a little bit. I like to get to know you as just a person in general. So what about hobbies? Anything you like okay. doing for fun? Uh, really the, like the stuff that I, I do with, with Shaw, with the, the course and the women's summit, that has really been my, okay. my fun and, and fun moment. But, um, for me, I was actually a makeup artist for, for a long time. I had, you know, just fell into, and it really started out as just a, a hobby. I used to, uh, you know, go frequent the, the makeup counters at the mall as that was like my happy hour on Friday and just right. buy different things. And I got pretty good at it. So I started uh, doing makeup for, for brides and, and for different special events and actually took on a job working part time as, as a makeup artist for cosmetics, a major cosmetics company. Um, really? And they've done makeup at uh, Fashion Week. And so it was, yeah, it turned into a, I don't do anything like small. Everything, I always got to take it <laughs> to some kind of next level, even my hobbies. Um, <laughs> but that, that has been something that, that I've really, really enjoyed for, for quite a few years. Right. Yeah. I can tell you, you don't dip your toe into anything. You're, you're all in. It sounds like. No. Yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> Pedal well, to the metal. That's how I drive. That's how I work. That's how, I live. <laughs> that's how you fly probably too. I mean, F-35 all yeah, wide open. If, there you go. If they mess around, they gave me the chance. <laughs> very good. Very good. Well, 
I, I thank you for sharing those hobbies. And, I, and I, I, again, I love what you're doing at Shaw and the HBCUs, all the things you're supporting there. So one thing I love to, to get to know when we talk to our heroes is just about family. You know, anything you'd like to share with yeah. us about your family? Because we, we do feel like we're one big family here. Absolutely. Um, I mean, first and foremost, I'm, I'm a Marine baby. Like I said, okay. my, my dad was uh, in the Marine Corps. So that's what, that's why I love, like I get excited when I see jet planes and, and big tanks and, and stuff like that. Yep, yep. Um, you know, I'm, I'm really, really proud. Um, we've got a lot of people in my family who served. Um, so very, very proud of that. My mother is uh, a therapist. So that's why I'm, I'm so balanced and grounded. Um, so I've, I've got that. Uh, background and I've got a younger sister and she's got two beautiful kids that, that I adore. So I've got a, a niece and nephew. Uh, one, he's eight and my niece is three. And I've got two other nieces um, by my brother-in-law and and all of these, these little girls were all born in the same year. So I've got three nieces back to back to back. One was born in the spring, summer and fall. Wow. So, yeah, so they're giving uh, my nephew a run for his money every time they get together. <laughs> Can't wait to see how that turns out. I bet you're a fun, a fun aunt too, aren't you? Oh yeah, <laughs> I, I I love it, and I've got all kinds of like aunt swag. So every shirt that has auntie on it, I probably have it. Right. I've got earrings that say auntie. Like I yeah, that is that is I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Now, is everybody in, in North Carolina? Yeah, for the most part. So my my mom and my dad actually just moved back to the area because um, he lived in Northern Virginia for quite a few years. Okay. So he's back in North Carolina now. Um, my sister and her family are here. My two other nieces are in the D.C. area, but they they come down. So we, you know, yeah, they're only a few hours up the road. That's right. Everybody, everybody's real close. That makes that's great. Yeah. So well, thank you for sharing about your family, and and we we just love to hear that. It sounds like you got your hands full being an auntie for quite a long time. So that's great. That's great. Well, yeah. <laughs> Make sure you look out for that nephew, though. I mean, he's a little outnumbered, so you know, just 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 have his back. <laughs> oh no, he he needs to to be handled because <laughs> he thinks he he can rule everything, but they don't show him. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Well, yeah, he'll, they'll check him. They'll check him. That's okay. <laughs> Now, how about uh, Ayoka? We we love to get insight from our guests about things they enjoy consuming from podcasts, YouTube, books, just, just things that that help you grow as just a person. So, anything it can be personal yeah. or professional that you like to share that you find value in. Um, personal, I am a huge fan of Brene Brown. Uh, okay. She wrote a book. She's a um, social work um, a degree holder by by trade, but. She's a, a researcher, uh, and uh, so I believe she was a, a social worker. At least that's what her work is in. But she wrote this amazing book called Daring Greatly, and it is one of the books that that changed my life. Uh, and it's and I'll show. I've got it here actually, uh, and you can see all the tabs in it. You can see how much I have referenced this book. I love this book, um, but it's all about having the courage to be vulnerable. And how that vulnerability can transform your your life, and not just your your personal life, but professionally as well. So, like I was talking about earlier with with my students and encouraging them to to tap into who they are and how to connect with people, that is at the root of that, uh, and that has certainly helped me along my journey. Um, and she's got several books, and so I and I have all of them. So I, I definitely encourage you to check her out. She's got a podcast uh, called Unlocking Us. And I think it's available on all platforms because she talks, she speaks from a, a leadership perspective as well. And so she talks to a lot of folks who are in um, leadership positions and, and just what that experience is and, and how we can be better, more empathetic, passionate, compassionate leaders. Uh, so I, I really love her perspective. Um, another book that I love is Start With Why. Uh, and, and you asked me about, uh, you know, my, my why and what drives me. Uh, you know, and I think that book is a, a great reference to get us out of thinking and so much focused on what we do, but why right. we do it. Right. Uh, so I definitely encourage anybody to to check that out as well. For sure. Simon Sinek. It's a great book. Love it. Love it. Yes. Now, we, we, we have fun on the hero episodes of Yoko. We play a lightning round and I'm just going to fire a bunch of random okay. things at you. Just come back to me with the with first thing that comes to your mind and we'll we'll get through as many as we can. Are you good? Okay, I'm ready. All right, I always start easy. So, what's the, what's your favorite food? Chicken. Chicken. How about <laughs> a, a adult beverage? 
tequila. Tequila. All right. Chicken and tequila. I hear you. Saturday during the week, red wine. <laughs> red wine during the week. I got you. Okay. <laughs> What's your favorite app on your phone? So the first app that came to mind was Instagram. Okay. But I use Google the most. <laughs> yeah. 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 We, we, I think we'd all be lost without that Google app, you know? How about a, a, a guilty pleasure? Celebrity gossip. Celebrity gossip. Okay. Like okay. The, so do you remember uh, The Inquirer? Uh-huh. That, that magazine that it would yeah. always have like the latest like scandal. Like, right. So bad and like okay magazine and that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. At the grocery store line. You're just always right there at the, at the checkout. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, yeah. So uh, you answered this, I think, earlier, but I'm just going to check to make sure. What's your favorite movie? Die Hard. Any of them. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Any of the Die Hards. Okay. All right. How about uh, favorite sports team? I'm a fair weather fan, I must admit. I make my choices okay. based on individual players and their uniforms. Or if they're okay. winning. <laughs> so it kind of so the answer is it depends. <laughs> it depends. It depends. So what is your favorite sport that you like to follow? Football, actually. Ironically Football, enough. okay. Um it's something about the I don't know, it's 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 intense. It's, it's really yeah. intense. It's like it's it's legit a battle, and it is fascinating to right. watch. This Super Bowl just had me on the edge of my seat this year. So, yeah, I have to say football. <laughs> it was a great one. How, how about uh, favorite music? R and B. R and B. Okay. Now, where is somewhere that you haven't been yet that you got to go one day? Fiji. Fiji. What is the most awesome place you have been? The most awesome place I I have been China. Yep. Oh, nice, nice. Okay. Now the last question. There's only one right answer. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Okay. <laughs> Woo. You passed. You passed. Okay. <laughs> oh, this has been a lot of fun, Yoka. So we we call it Eco Ask Why. And first of all, thank you for playing the lightning round. That was a lot of fun getting to know you. And we we, we always wrap up with the why. So if somebody wants to come up to you and say, Yoko, what is your personal why? What what would that be? You know, ironically, I've helped a lot of organizations define their why, and I've not like fully baked a succinct statement of my why. Okay. Um, but I will suffice to say that I like to connect people to what it is they need so they can accomplish what it is that they set out to do. Mm. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. And you're doing a great job of that just by hearing your story and the, the, the everything you're teaching these young people. It's just, uh, we're blessed to have you out here in industry helping that next generation. So, Ayoka, thank you so much. It's been wonderful to get to know you for sharing your story and, and what an interesting story. The next time I see a F-35, you're the first person that's going <laughs> to pop to mind. Yeah, wave at it. <laughs> Well, I thank you again for your time today, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Well, thank you. The pleasure has been mine. I really appreciate it. Now, that was a fun conversation with Oyoka. I tell you what, she is a hero. I mean, that course that she teaches, come on. I mean, that is phenomenal. She is not only just talking about being a mentor. She developed a course and is helping that next generation really close the gap. Unbelievable unbelievable and just the, the way that she's being very intentional about how she spends her time and i don't know about you but when i see a f-35 i'm gonna always think about her and just the way that she painted that picture just being there you could feel her emotion you could just just sense it the, the the accomplishment that she had in her voice to be part of something and we want you to be part of something too so thank you again for that just hope hope this blessed you the way it did me now if you're liking the show don't just be a consumer. Share it with other people. Also, go out there and do a rating. Give us a review. That makes a big difference. It really moves the needle. So enjoy. I hope you enjoyed this one. This was a fun hero episode. Have a great day and keep asking why.